Well, guess what? Web firms are to adopt a no-track button. That, according to the privacy princess herself, Julia Angwin. She joins us now from the Bureau in San Francisco. Julia, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. Oh, great. So tell us about this, the no-track button. This is something I could do with. Yeah, so what's happening is a bunch of web companies have agreed to allow consumers to click a single button on their web browser that would say, do not track me. And then that would basically mean that the information that is usually collected about all the websites that you visit would still be collected, but it wouldn't be used for certain um, activities like customizing advertising, and they would promise not to give it to health companies, insurance companies, employers, etc. So Julia, this would still enable some uh, tracking, but there would just be certain cases in which the information could absolutely not be used? Yeah, so basically there was a huge battle for the past year. The, the industry was resisting this do not track button because they didn't want to limit the ability to collect the information. So for a long time, the Federal Trade Commission, which had proposed the Do Not Track button, had been holding out saying, look, you have to not collect information about people when they click that Do Not Track button. Now the FTC has agreed that, look, we'll take a first step, which is that some information will be collected but can only be used under certain conditions. So basically they've allowed some amount of collection, but they've got some use restrictions that are hoping that make that a little bit better for people. Right, and at the same time, it's not going to thwart anything uh, such as liking on social websites, right? That's right, so there's an exception allowed. for Facebook, like Google Plus One, all of the social network um, companies that are tracking you, which is interesting because actually those guys, weirdly, have your name. So when they know what website you're on, they already know who you are, whereas a lot of this other tracking was actually pretty anonymous. Is this a legal thing or is this a voluntary thing by these companies? Can they just decide to just say, well, you know, we changed our mind, we're, we're going we're to stop not tracking? Yeah, they could change their minds. This is a voluntary agreement. So basically the threat of regulation became enough that the industry agreed to this step. Um, but at the same time as this announcement was made, the White House actually today is having this event calling for Congress to pass legislation which would pass a privacy bill of rights. And so the threat of legislation basically is what caused the industry to come together to adopt this do not track. But Julia, as you point out in your story, now are there some concerns about the fact that this could uh, maybe in some ways hinder the standardization of a, a, another type of do not track tool that could go into effect? Yeah, so basically there's also an international standards body called W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, that has been working on a do not track standard. And so the industry coming together to adopt a certain meaning for do not track, and so, some people have raised the question of whether that would derail this international standards body um, from coming up with its own recommendations. But the position of the industry and of, of the White House is really that, look, we can't wait. We can't wait for this international standards body to de debate and deliberate for years on end. Um, for people need privacy now, so here's a first good step, and then if those guys want to build on it, and put in better protections later, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Julia, um, you know everything that I think there is to know about, about privacy is, I mean, is this enough for you? I mean, do you feel safe on the web? Because whenever I talk to you, I feel, I feel terribly naked <laughs> and exposed. You know, actually, this is a very good first step. Like, I think this is um, the kind of thing that, like, will be really helpful for my mother and father who are not that web savvy. I'm always going to be a little more uh, privacy paranoid, <laughs> as you know. And so I'm still going to probably use a lot of additional software to block other kinds of tracking. I personally don't like, for instance, that um, seeing pictures of my Facebook friends on pages that I visit, it feels to me like a violation. Like, why would my friends be on this page? I don't want my identity attached to the pages I'm browsing and given back does to that, Facebook. Lauren, does that creep you out too? When uh, you see pictures of your friends? Yeah, I, I think yes and no. I mean, I think that um, you're talking about social networks. Yeah. And we're, we're also talking about web browsing. And they're two sides of the same coin. Maybe they're different, yeah. but they're not. Um, I think that what Julia's saying about the idea that there's going to be this embedded one touch button that says do not track while you're on a web browser is incredibly helpful because right now you have to navigate mm. through lots of different settings and preferences and, and apply certain tools or mm. plugins that the average consumer really just c can be very easily confused by, I think. Right. And I think it's worth pointing out, uh, just to toot our own horn a little bit, last week we had this big story about how Google was circumventing the privacy settings on Apple's Safari web browser. So at least do not track would prevent that, right? So there wouldn't be as much of this sort of, oops, sorry, we miss it was a technical mis mistake where we weren't honoring your settings. Like everyone would be held accountable to this one button. Hmm.
But so, I mean, that sounds good. I do personally get creeped out when I went on, especially with, with a like thing. It says, do, do you like this? And then it's got pictures of all people I know, usually from the office. I'm um, just waiting for the day you come on a show and you've pulled the Facebook plug. You just, it's, it's, every time it's you gonna, talk. It's going to be, it's going to be soon. <laughs> Got to find another way to tell my mother what I'm doing. But I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just so irritating for me. Um, and I, I think you feel the same way. Um, Julia, what next? What more steps can we expect mm -hmm. on this um, as the industry tries to be proactive? Well, the next thing we're going to see is um, possible legislation, right? So the White House is calling for this, for Congress to pass this Privacy Bill of Rights. I think that, you know, this year, an election year, maybe it won't get through, but certainly they're putting some effort behind it. And so you could see um, a bill. And it is interesting because that bill, I think, would provide even greater protections, possibly, because it would allow people to see and access the data. Right now, you can't get a copy of the data that's stored about you at any of these companies. And that bill would allow you to see it and make corrections if there were things incorrect and possibly to delete it if you don't want it. Ooh, exciting, yeah. exciting stuff. <laughs> privacy princess herself. Yeah. Well, maybe it's the paranoid <laughs> privacy princess, Julia Angwin. Thank you very much. Props to Julia. Thank for you. Great no, that's great, great story. Check that out on WSJ.com.